we were talking earlier about you know the the, the banter that that you and Matt uh, have back and forth, and you can always tell how good of friends are by how 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 uh, how vicious the banter how is. Mean, yeah. Yeah, how mean, yeah, how mean they are. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, uh, I, it just remind I, I had a friend like that at the unit. We're getting we're getting ready for a mission, and he's sitting next to me on on this on on the helicopter, and uh, and the blades are spinning, blades are spinning. And the blade and, and the helicopter starts to power down, and which is never a good sign. It means the mission's delayed and approvals got messed up. Maybe the target left. That happens sometimes over and over and over again. So it happens, and I'm sitting there, and I fake to my radio, and I start going, uh-huh, okay. Oh, that's good to know. No. I know where this is going. That's super <laughs> important. Good to know. I just sit there and keep looking in the distance. And he's like, he's and he's like, he's messing with his kit and mess with, he's like, hey, what's wrong with hey, my comms? What what'd they say? What'd they say? I was like, you didn't get that? He's like, no, I, I was like, I was, and I was like, stop, hold on. Yep. Oh, big update. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah absolutely. So we're gonna take off in just a minute. Got it. Needed to know that before we took off. And I go back. He's like, what are they saying? What are they saying? And he's messing with his comms. And there's a comms guy in the hell. He's like, check my radios, my radios aren't working. And uh, everyone else sees this happening, and I always mess with them, and they know exactly what's happening. <laughs> yeah. They eventually start cracking up and can't hold it in any longer, and he realizes what I've done to him again. He's being fucked with. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. And he looks at me and he goes, "That's." He goes, "Brent." He goes, "I hope you get shot tonight." <laughs> oh shit. And uh, <laughs> and we laugh and laugh and laugh. <laughs> I get shot that night. Okay. We're, 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 we're on target. I end up, me and a small team separate uh, because there were, there was individuals of interest that we go to, 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 to look into. We get into a big firefight and it gets put out over the radio. Um, hey, you know, there's, uh, we have an operator down. He's been hit by a grenade. He's been shot. He's losing a lot of blood. blood. We need, you know, we, we need to get him back to you guys real quick. Uh, and that was really just to get the helos, you know, coming in because, you know, to, to, to medically evacuate me. Well, like I said, the main element was separated and, uh, and, and Josh starts walking around going, no, damn it. Brent's been shot. Brent got shot. And they're like, Hey, settle down. We don't know who got shot. It could have been anyone. It might've been, you know, we don't know. He's like, he no, <laughs> I know it was Brent. Cause I told him, I hope you get shot tonight. <laughs> and everyone who wasn't on that helicopter is like, oh, that's messed up. Why don't you yeah. ever say that to a guy? <laughs> and that's just that type of humor. Like when yeah. you guys go back and forth like that is exactly yeah. what that type of uh, of relationship just, just reminds me of. And oh, yeah. It, and it sounds unhealthy from the outside. And it couldn't be any healthier, you know, when, right. if you if you know. Yeah, if you're on the outside looking in and you're not you you work an office job, you yeah. know, in a cubicle and you're not in the first responder field or military field or whatever, but just know that the it it is that type of humor that you you know you're loved. Yeah. Because right. if they're not joking around with you like that and they don't talk to you a whole lot, <laughs> they don't like you. You are not a fan favorite. That, that, <laughs> so. That's right. Yeah, quietness will, will say more, you know, about a relationship than you know than, than joking like that. Yeah. Um, if you're down the hall and you hear a bunch of laughing and you go in the room <laughs> and the laughing stops and it doesn't start back up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a clue that's, about yourself. You need, to, you need to self reflect. Self reflect well, a little bit. Uh, besides so. that funny story, just, uh, just it just reminded me of it. Um, you know, the, I, I said before, the cigars are, are definitely something that we wanted to do. We finally, we finally got around to them and it seems about right that everything we've worked super hard on to get this coffee, you know, off the ground yeah, and do good things on. with them. And, um, <laughs> we, we, we bring out the cigars and they're an instant hit and half the world drinks coffee, a small amount of people smoke cigars but we've hit a nerve with the first responder community. You know, those people who smoke cigars are, are fervent cigar smokers. And unlike coffee, where you do have a few options, um, cigars is, a, you know, we're the only ones doing a cigar for first responders. And yes, it, because it helps out the business, it has allowed us actually to write checks 
just last week that uh, I would have had a hard time writing, but I could because the cigar part of our business may may supersede our coffee sales by by next month. Damn, so it's it's I'm it's unbelievable. Um, and so it's a it's a Habano cigar, and not, not a lot of people know what that means. Uh, Habano obviously translates into Havana, which Havana Cuba. Um, and everyone loves the Cuban cigar because of its its uh, you know it's it's a uh, a very uh, respected or, or or well known cigar. But the truth is, in the cigar community, what's Cuba, the forbidden fruit? Well, it get, it's the forbidden fruit, and until uh, recently, you know, you know, a few years ago, the embargo got lifted, and you can get them. But the quality of Cuban cigars have plummeted, uh, oh. and so the Nicaragua, who really has taken over the cigar market for for quality and production, quality control, they have used what's uh, the Cuban seeded tobacco in Nicaragua, so. This is a Cuban cigar that's made in Nicaragua. So you really get the best of both worlds. You get a Cuban cigar that's as good as, which is, you know, there's a reason they were so popular, but you get the, the quality control of a country that, that still cares and isn't just riding on their, their laurels of the 70s and 80s. So it's a, yeah. it's a full flavored cigar, but it's still super smooth. So it doesn't matter if you're a new cigar smoker, it's not going to overpower you. If you're a seasoned cigar smoker, it's not going to be like a Connecticut or super light that it doesn't interest you. We just we were we were lucky enough to pick a cigar that truly uh, caters to the masses and people who know about it, you know, go, oh, that's a Habano. I'll l- let me try it. And we do the same thing with cigars. We, we do a subscription. So it'll, you know, single four pack, 10 pack, no shipping. And it'll just you know continue to show up to your uh yeah, to your house every month. So please consider us, uh, you know, you can, you can start your day with us with coffee, then you can end your day with us with a cigar and uh, give me a little bit of time. We'll, we'll throw a bourbon in the mix. Hell yeah. Um, <laughs> I got a buddy. He's a, uh, he owns a cigar shop, um, retired from my department. Um, okay. And I'm just curious. I, I, is that something like if he, you own a cigar shop, man, you can... that's, that's a huge thing. I, I'm actually glad you brought that up. Um, I'm much better at just kind of, talking with you back and forth and I am a salesman because I would have remembered what th- that particular part. Okay. We have a wholesale program. And for anyone listening, that is huge. If you know a cigar shop or you know a shop that, you know, will will carry coffee, we have a wholesale program. And a lot of the shops and cigar shops that we're into now is because a first responder reached out to us and said, Hey, I know this place. Would you be, you know, I love what you do and I want to help. Would you be interested? Or you know, would you sell to, to them? Absolutely. We have a wholesale, um, you know, program. So please, if you know a coffee shop and you have a you know, a relationship with the owner, that'll get us into that place so much faster than I ever could do on a cold call. You know, like that's kind of uh, how business gets done. Like, right? Yeah, I'm friends working. with this guy. Yeah. Let Let me connect you to, and once they hear our story, you know hear my background, hear what I'm doing now. It, you know, and the qual they'll ask, well, can I smoke the cigar? They'll smoke it. They'll love it. And it's a done deal after that. So yeah, please, if you're listening, um, and, and, and you have that type of connection and are willing to help us out, that is a huge one. Yeah. Yeah. I'll definitely get that going. That'd be kind of cool. Cause obviously and knowing that there's a lot of retired cops that go to this guy's cigars, I, I never smoked a cigar personally. Um, yeah. I kind of chickened out in, uh, Where'd we go? Um, Dominican. We went to the Dominican. Okay. And um, yeah, D- DR has some good cigars as well. Well, we get there and 